verses 6 to 7, and from Luke chapter 2, verses 10 to 14. I will read in time. ทำไมเนี่ยมาจากเอเชียบทที่เก้าและเจ็ดโดยมีเด็กคนหนึ่งเกิดมาเพื่อเราไม่บุตรชายคนหนึ่งประทานมาให้เราและการปกครองจะอ
there is a, a group known as the Society of International Law that says that during the last 4,000 years, there have only been 268 years of peace. Around 7% of the last 4,000 years that there has been an absence of war. And just in the last three centuries alone, there have been more than 200 wars in Europe alone. 8,000 peace treaties have been signed and broken. The average American or person may know about World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, Afghanistan, Iraq. But there are so many other conflicts in other parts of the world. Uh, the Middle East, or Asia, Africa, potentially North Korea. And of course, we all know about genocide and terrorism. So if we are celebrating how Jesus brought peace on earth 2,000 years ago, there has to be some people who may wonder, where is the peace that Jesus brought from heaven to earth? When Jesus came 2,000 years ago, instead of peace, it has mostly been war and violence. Jesus came as a baby and the angels came singing, peace on earth. But remember that even just after his birth, King Herod found out about it. And then he immediately orders the killing of all male children under the age of two around Bethlehem. So if that is the case, what kind of peace did Jesus bring? Well, the peace that Jesus brings, or peace that he brought in, is not about ending all wars and conflict. At least not in this world. In Matthew 24, 6, Jesus says that you will hear wars and rumors of wars. Luke 21, it says, when you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. What Jesus means is that part of the signs of the end of the age is that wars, conflicts, and uprisings will happen. So that the peace that Jesus brought is not mainly about peace from the world's wars and conflicts. Because on the contrary, conflicts and wars will continue to increase. Now, even if I said that, you know, it doesn't mean that people, especially Christians, should not try to work for peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, right? That's the Bible. First Thessalonians 5.10, it says, live in peace with each other. Talking about Christians, 1 Peter 3.11 says, They must seek peace and pursue it. So it is not about Christians giving up on peacemaking. It just means that Jesus was not born to bring world peace in the sense that all warfare will disappear in these times. Now I think we can all agree that many people are looking for certain kinds of peace. There may be a home somewhere where mom and dad aren't getting along. There's talk of divorce, and neither of them wants it, but they don't know how to get the fighting to stop, and neither do their kids. Maybe there's a guy in high school or college, and he's feeling harassed and pushed around from worrying about what everyone else may think of him. He's still trying to figure things out about himself. And then you may have a man or a woman working at a job they don't really like. It is stressing him out as the company puts more and more on him and expects him to keep doing his job. Or there could be a single mom trying to make the finances work out. She didn't plan for her life to be this way, but, but it is. Or maybe an elderly woman living by herself her family doesn't really keep track of her well and her retirement. It doesn't look like it's going to last. Now, all these people, just examples, whether Christian or not, need some kind of peace. Relational peace. Peace from stress. Financial peace. Psychological peace. There's so many kinds of peace that people need that sometimes people think that only death can bring real peace. Uh, that's why there could be people who may say to you when you die, may you rest in peace. 
Um, some say, some might say that maybe Jesus came to bring us some inner peace, an inner peace where nothing can bother us, a peace that allows us to remain perfectly calm and composed no matter what's happening all around us. But as much as I can say that peace on earth is not about peace from wars and conflict, the peace on earth that Jesus brings is also not mainly about relational, financial, psychological, uh, inner peace, or whatever other peace. Although all those things are good things that come from God. Let's take a look at Luke 12, 49, 51, 52. It says, that's a Jesus saying, I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. Then go to verse 51. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two, and two against three. That means when you first trust and receive Jesus in your life and follow what he says, life will not necessarily be peaceful. As followers of Christ, you may not necessarily get along with everybody. Some of may even, you know, some and even many others, they may be even be mad at you for what you believe. That would include family members uh, who may not be Christians. You will be accused of being holier than thou or being a hypocrite. And even if a Christian does get a certain measure of internal peace, the question is, is that the main thing that Jesus brings? Is that the point of why God sent Jesus Christ to the world to suffer and die on the cross? Did Jesus do all that for our inner peace? So when we try to define peace on earth that Jesus brought on Christmas, when we define it as the absence of stress or conflict, or we think of it as relational, psychological, internal peace. Um, perhaps that's, that's not exactly the way to go, although those are good things that our Christian faith can bring. So what is the peace did Jesus bring on Christmas Day? When God sends a great army of angels or heavenly hosts to announce glory to God and peace on earth, perhaps the peace they're announcing is much bigger and much more important than the normal ideas that people may have of peace. And that kind of peace that the angels announced is none other than peace between us and God. In other words, peace with God. Now, now what does that mean? Um, yesterday, a group of us went Christmas caroling for some former missionaries to Thailand that live near Duarte and Claremont. The songs we sang were the usual popular songs that make us feel good and remember so many good things about Christmas and the Christmas story. One song we didn't sing was Hark the Herald Angel Sing. It is a song that mentions the peace on earth that Jesus brings. Um, you know, Hark the Herald angels sing glory to the newborn king i guess i'm trying not to sing uh, peace on earth and mercy mild god and sinners reconcile now god and sinners reconcile that is what peace with god is all about colossians 1 21 to 22 once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. The reason Jesus was born on Christmas Day is that so that he can reconcile us to God. Through his life and his death, we are forgiven of our sins and are reconciled to God through faith. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
And this peace of God, peace with God, is something that Jesus grants us in this life. We are given perfect forgiveness of our sins. It is a perfect peace between us and God that's made available to us by faith in Jesus Christ. It is something that will never go away. Circumstances that may change, wars and conflict that may come and go. And we do live in a world where stress and people and situations may disturb our outer and inner peace. And even our feelings about our peace with God can change. But Jesus brings us perfect peace, reconciliation with God, peace with God. We're made holy and blameless in God's eyes. That's because Jesus made this peace through his blood shed on the cross. Now, as Christians, we understand why peace with God is essential. Without the peace of Christ, our minds will normally not submit to God. Our minds are not able to do that. Romans 8, 7, 8 says that the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. That's why the peace and reconciliation that can only come from God is important. Because without peace, our minds are actually at war with God. Our minds don't naturally want to submit to God. Instead, our minds keep trying and trying to make our own peace with God instead of trusting in Jesus Christ. Now, before I became a Christian, I, I used to believe that to make peace with God or to be good with God, what I needed to do was to try hard to be good. I did good things hoping to be worthy enough to have God give me His favor and his blessings. In other words, I tried to make my own peace with God. I did not consider that Jesus Christ has already made that peace through his sacrifice. I have another example of someone who tried to make their own peace with God. Um, when I worked as a chaplain, there was a visit I did with a daughter of a female patient who was in hospice. The daughter was at the bedside of her mother who was slowly but surely going through the process of dying. I also found out that the daughter's husband was also in hospice at another nursing home. And then she also mentioned that while she tries to take care of the needs of her mother and husband, she also has two small children under her care in addition to her own um, physical health issues. So I asked her how she was able to handle this unusually difficult hardship. Um, the daughter told me she was Muslim, but she also confessed that she was not very devout in her Muslim faith. However, she did say that it was part of her belief, or her own belief, that the suffering her mother is experiencing and the suffering that she is experiencing, no matter how bad or how long, is how their sins are being cleansed. That means the longer and the more suffering they experience, the more sins are taken away, which will eventually allow her to get to heaven. That means having their own suffering is a way to make peace with God, as a way to gain favor with God. She considered their suffering as a way to make payment and wipe the slate clean from their sins. It's like if you suffer enough, you will gain the blessings and favor from God. But uh, praise be to God. Having peace with God is not about trying to be good enough. It's not about suffering enough in this life so that we can be granted a ticket for the peace of heaven. Through the perfect life of Jesus, his suffering and his death, we don't have to pay through our goodness or through our own suffering to make peace with God. That's because Jesus is our peace. He is the Prince of Peace. He suffered and died and took the penalty for our sins. Isaiah says in Isaiah 53, by his stripes we are healed. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. 
Now we have the perfect peace with God because of Jesus Christ. But someday, when Christ comes back again, there will be total peace on earth in every way. And not just peace with God. There will be an end to all wars and conflict. There will be total relational peace, psychological peace, economic peace. In the end, there will be total peace. But if you truly understand and have peace with God, it will actually lead you to giving peace to others and to experiencing those other kinds of peace. Peace with God will lead you towards the peace that surpasses all understanding because you know that God can handle all your problems. In the end, you will know deep in your heart that God is in charge and there is no need to worry. There is no need to be anxious about many things. But for now, the question is, uh, do you have this peace with God? Or are you striving to make your own peace with God? Are you striving to gain some kind of peace without recognizing the most important peace that Jesus brings? Or if you do have peace with God, are you living out your peace? Is this peace with God in you leading you to be a giver of peace to others, to be a peacemaker, and to have peace also within yourself? Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, you give us the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Prince of Peace and the Giver of Peace. By his blood, we are reconciled to God. We accept that his suffering and death was done on our behalf. Lord, we accept by faith this gift that comes from Jesus. And we receive this perfect peace with God, this perfect forgiveness of our sins. Thank you, Lord, for considering us and seeing us as holy and blameless in your sight. We don't need to try to be good enough to have your love or blessing. And we just thank you that this peace with God is just even just a start Because, Lord, we actually will not see perfect peace literally in this lifetime with other people or circumstances or even in ourselves. But we thank you that in the end, your peace will prevail. When all is said and done, there will be total everlasting peace. Lord, we ask that you let our peace with God lead us into giving peace to others and to experiencing your peace in many other ways as we look forward to the day when Jesus comes again. We pray in Jesus' name.